Hello everybody. I will just check that I am live and I can see that my end too. Get some more light in here for you. <clears throat> I hope everyone is having a good day. Lovely. Okay, well, it's um, a bank holiday Monday for us, so that is why I have been able to do a live for you during the day. Um, so I do hope you can join me. I have decided to make a card for Leslie. As you know, Leslie is having an operation today. So the idea I thought would be that we would create a Get Well card for Leslie. Um, and there is a card call for her as well. So if you want to make your own card for Leslie, all the details are over on the Heffy Doodle blog. So go, be sure to go and check that out. Um, you can send it, you can add it virtually. And we have the Heffy Doodlers monthly challenge, which is also themed with the Get Well. So we are supposed to be in spring. So I thought I would start with a spring themed card. Now I have pulled out a ton of supplies. I may not use them all, um, but there are little elements in some of the other stamp sets that I think will work well with the main scene. So to start off with, I know for sure that I am going to use um, at least the bunny here. And this is the Wrapped With Love stamp set. And I think this bunny is very sweet. Um, I haven't used it yet, so that was the perfect excuse. Now, I did want to use originally Ranger. However, as I'm not up for mirror stamping today, I haven't actually used this doggy yet in this stamp set. So, perfect excuse. And then that way that these two stamp sets, when I'm doing cards, I try to think about which way they will face. So with this dog and the bunny, they're going to be looking at each other. So that's really cute. And I also pulled out the squirrels. And I thought we could at least use maybe the birds and maybe one of the squirrels. We'll see how we get on. Um, and I've got a ton of other supplies that I will talk you through as we get going. So I'm just going to start now with some stamping to start off with. Um, so we'll probably do some stamping, some ink blending, and maybe come back to some stamping as well, um, depending on what other items we may need. Now, I haven't used this stamp set before, so I do need to like prime it, I think is the right word. And the way that I do that is I just put some ink on the stamp and take that layer of ink off. Give it a moment to dry off. And now it should stamp perfectly the first time, she says. <laughs> I find if um, you've got a brand new stamp set and you don't take off the like almost like the dusty residue from the production you can sometimes get a bit of a dodgy image and i didn't let that dry long enough as you can see but that's okay i've got a bit of water in there so let's just turn that round and try that again so the weather here today is miserable might have to come in with a pen. I've maybe got a little notch in that stamp. Never mind. I have a black memento pen. That's not the black memento pen. <laughs> this is the black memento pen. Um, I've just got a little notch here that keeps playing around with me. So that's the bunny from the Wrapped With Love stamp set. So let's put that away. I don't think I'm going to use anything else from, from that set. We're going to real mix and match today. But we'll keep it out for the coordinating dies. And I'm going to use 
this doggy. Now this is the Who Let the Dogs Out stamp set. And if you're a dog fan, it's definitely one to get. You've got a cockapoo, which is like Ranger, which is Leslie's dog. You have, I think this is a French Bulldog. You have a little Chihuahua um, and an English Bull Terrier. So it's a real fun stamp set if you're a dog lover. I'm going to use this one today. Um, anyone know what breed he is? Or she? Schnauzer, is it? Is that the right word? Schnauzer? Hi, Luan. Hello, Fire USA. Took me a minute to find you. That's okay. I thought that might be the case. Sometimes I think Facebook is a little bit slow with its notifications. I've been getting notifications like two days later. <laughs> it is a cute stamp set, this one. Very cute stamp set. Scottish Terrier. Yes, you're right. Thank you. I'm, I'm okay with most of my dog breeds. <laughs> But not all of them. Okay, I'm definitely going to use a squirrel. And this is the nuts about you. So we've got a bunny and a dog that looks towards each other. I am going to use this um, Tremendous Peekaboo stamp set. So maybe one of the squirrels could come out of the, the Peekaboo set. And I was going to put some flowers in, in its hand. I don't know which one would fit. Maybe that one there this one does anyone else mix and match their stamp sets <laughs> I love mixing and matching right what else could we take from this I'm thinking um, a bird as well for the, um, the stamp two of them and then we I might want three so let's stamp two So what time is it in I Iowa? Iowa? Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> I'm so bad with geography. It was never, ever my strong point. I think this one's quite early for you guys, if I saw the times on the poster correctly. This 4pm one. It's 4pm for me. Oh, 10 a.m. Central. Not too bad then. And is it... So for us, Luanne, it's a bank holiday um, in the UK. So we had a new king, which I'm sure most of you are aware of. Um, so it was his coronation. So we've got an extra, extra day off work. But I think my work colleague who lives in America... But she's in, she's not in Iowa. She's in Seattle, I think. She's working today, but bless her, she's the only one from our team in, in at work today because it's not a bank holiday for her. No holiday. That's a shame. But then you guys get lots of holidays, like public holidays that I'm just like, seriously? <laughs> we should have something like that. Okay, so I've got three birds because I do plan to do like a tree with a spring theme in there. So maybe the birds, I may not end up using them, but that's also okay. I tend to stamp too much rather than too little. And we may come back in for a few other bits and pieces from that. Okay, so we're definitely going to use those in the scene. Um, and this is where I've really gone to town on my mix and match. I, again, may or may not use most of this. But the flowers on this one, I think, are the right size for the dog. But you also have... So this is the um, Berry Big Heart stamp set. But you also have... In the Happily Ever Crafter... A very small bunch of flowers so I thought we could use the big ones either for the bunny or the dog but then I thought that was quite overwhelming for the squirrel 
Um, so maybe we could use a smaller bunch of flowers for the squirrel. So let's just stamp. I'm not going to bother putting it on the platform. I like for these, um, for just grabbing small elements, just to grab a small, like a, I think it's called an acrylic block, um, just to stamp it because it feels, always feels like more of a faff to put it on the, on the door of the Misty for such a small, small element. So there's a little bunch of flowers. And this is a uh, stamp sets are brilliant for just being able to take very small elements from them. And I thought even maybe we could incorporate the box of chocolates because who doesn't want a box of chocolates when they're feeling rubbish? Chocolates, cake, <laughs> everything that's not good for you. But when you're feeling rubbish and ill. Memorial Day will be the end of this month. Oh, what date's that, Luanne? Because we have another bank holiday at the end of the month. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Wendy from Wales. Hello, hello. I would ask whereabouts in Wales, but then I'm only going to have to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce what you probably write. <laughs> so I'm not sure I will ask that question. But hello, hello. <laughs> I have my husband's uh, um, yeah, auntie lives in, here we go, Aberystwyth. Did I say that right, Wendy? Someone from Wales. <laughs> Tell me if I said that right. <laughs> Took me a long time to get that. <laughs> oh, now I've just got black ink all over my hands. May 29th, remembering those who died while serving in the military. It's always a, the, a good thing to remember. So that's the same day as ours then. So, oh, that's nice. From, that means my boss has probably got to work on her own because my boss is from Prague. So again, her bank holidays are sometimes a bit different to ours. <laughs> At least uh, my other colleague will be able to get off. Haha, <laughs> no, don't worry. It's a little town called Welshpool. Oh, well, that's easy to say. Yes, that's perfect. In about an hour or so from here. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll tell her that I'll be able to not embarrass myself saying that again in future then. Um, okay, so I have got a couple of other stamp sets there, but I do not know if I want them. They're only for small flower, like flowery elements. So I always find I may end up like I have big ideas that don't fit on the piece of paper. So let's let's start with this for now. I'm just going to get some of this out of my way. I know you probably can't see it, but it's very much in my way here. Okay, so I'm actually um, going to... Prayers for Leslie. Hope the surgery went well. Yes, me too. I don't actually know what time her surgery was today, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know whereabouts she is in that. But yes, I hope it all goes well, Leslie, if you end up watching on the replay. And I guess it doesn't matter if you see this card because um, it'll only be added with the hashtag for your card call anyway. <laughs> so for those who missed the beginning, I am creating a Get Well card for Leslie. And if you haven't seen, there is a card call for, for Leslie. So if you'd like to make your own Get Well card you can um so you can do that all the details are over on the heffy doodle blog okay so um i'm not actually sure what colors are actually going to end up in my background so i am going to start with my background so that when i'm coloring especially the flowers we can make sure that we incorporate the right colors into our card so what i've got here is whilst i am in the uk I actually do like the Imperial dies and I've got the Imperial scalloped frame die here, the largest one from the set. And the reason for that, um, for those who maybe don't know, our metric sizes are different. So I do have both because I make both, I make both, both size cards. So I've, this is the Imperial and this is our metric. 
And as you can see with our metric, we get a little bit more in the height or the width, depending on which way, but you guys get a little bit more in the width. And I think today I want, even though I'm going to do it this way, I want a bit more width in my card, which is why I have chosen to grab the Imperial Scalloped Frame Die. Okay, so I need some white cardstock, so bear with me. I'll open this away from the uh, microphone a little bit. My pet hate is rustling bags. <laughs> so this cellophane stuff on these card stocks can bug me sometimes. <laughs> Does anyone else have a pet, a pet hate like that? Literally rustling bags. Um, now this is the Heffy Doodle Bright White cardstock. Um, and because my guillotine is probably going to be too chunky to get in here, I'm going to just cut this down for the die cutting machine. Okay. Let me get rid of that. It's still a bit wet. Um, so I've got some Heffy Doodle memo tape here. We're going to use this in a couple of different ways today. For those who haven't watched my lives before, you can get a dispenser for it, but I did drop mine and tread on it by accident and broke it. <laughs> Bear with me. That was not the idea. I did not want to break it, but it works without it too. Okay. Bear with me because my die cutting machine is just off to the right. So, Wendy, I think you're off today as well with a bank holiday. I think I've got a colleague who lives in Wales as well, and he's not working today. Did you do anything nice for the coronation? Sorry, let me get some of this out of the way. My die cutting plates are huge. Right, um, and now, actually, I'm going to cut the tree. Now, I should just about get it out of this extra cardstock and I'm doing it in white again and I'm going to ink blend it with some brown now the reason I'm saying it's going to fit on this piece let me see how much this is in the frame these plates are huge I should get some smaller ones is because part of this is actually going to end up chopped off so I'm all about saving cardstock. Um, I'm just thinking, so this tree is going to be this side. So as you can see, I probably plan to chop off some of it here and at the bottom anyway. So if I die cut it more like that, it's okay. And I'm going to show you what I do to make it go with the fact that I've used a scalloped frame die. So let me get this die cut. Let's do that. And then I want to put a wood grain texture in it. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can ink blend your white cardstock first and then um, get some scissors. Sorry, excuse me. Where did I put my beautiful cutter bee scissors? You can... Um, ink blend and then put the wood grain in but I actually like to put the wood grain in first so that when I'm ink blending it darkens up now you'll see with this die that it doesn't fully cut to the top now that's because Leslie wanted to save space and give you more for your money in this die set but it is perfectly you know the way that it's um lined up is you can literally snip it really straight across like this and because most of it will be covered up with your your tree like the bra um the leaves you won't even see it so um even if you have gone a little bit wonky so if you've ever wondered why it doesn't slip all the way to the top there you go so i'm actually going to bring in the wood grain this this die is a background die 
The other thing I want to mention about this is how it's a continuous pattern. So if you're making a slimline card, you can totally take a slimline die, start at one end, and where it's not cutting around the edge, you can then continue the pattern to make a slimline card. Oh, sorry, lots of comments, let me catch up. Sorry I'm late crafting along with you. Oh, Kelly, hi. What are you doing today? What are you up to? What crafting are you doing? Um, yes, bank holiday, Wendy says. I'm classed disabled, so just kids being home is different, but I love having them home. Oh, I bet. Actually, no, we didn't do anything for the coronation. You probably watched more on the TV than I did. <laughs> I didn't watch it, not a fan. No, no, me neither. So I'm going to put a wood grain effect. Now, it's got quite a lot of detail in here. I want to use um, more of this circle one. So if you want to, you can pick up your cardstock face down to how you're going to blend to figure out roughly where you want to do it and turn it over. Now I can't use obviously tape on this, so I am going to have to make sure I hold it in place so it doesn't move. Okay. So now you can see we've got that wood grain effect in there and when I ink blend it, that should come up beautifully. So now that I've cut all those elements out, let me get rid of these plates. Oh, I'm sorry that you have a sympathy card to make, Kelly. They're never easy, are they? Okay, so that's the wood grain texture background. If you don't have this, it's currently 15% off at the Heffy Doodle site. I'm not sure how long for. So whilst Leslie is having her operation, the store is closed in regards to shipping for the next week but that doesn't stop you shopping <laughs> for the next week it will just mean that it will not be shipped until she opens up the shop again next week i think okay so let me get rid of that because we, we're not going to need that one again or um actually no i am going to need this one again so the other thing that i will use this for so that when i come to put this in and i chop off a little bit at the bottom instead of just having it straight because the background is scalloped I will probably use the scallop die to actually chop it through the die cutting machine. But we will do that when we come to put it all together. So I'm just going to pop that out the way. Am I in bed watching the live? <laughs> um, okay, so let's get some inks. Just getting myself in such a pickle here with so many things out and about. And I actually also will put this one in. And I think I want to use this bigger peekaboo die. But I will probably do this after I have ink blended. I will die cut that in um, afterwards. So let's pop. Oh, getting all fingers and thumbs. Right, let's get some ink. I'm actually going to go for the background first. And then we can cut the tree, the, the leaves out as well. So I'm thinking just some grass. Now, I could either just ink blend directly onto that. Or I could use some grassy, grassy borders out of green cardstock. Which I think I'm going to do to help build it up quicker. So let's get some green cardstock. The one thing I need to do is label my green cardstocks <laughs> because I never remember the colour names. I think this is Kiwi Crush. So I'm just going to take the scrappy piece here that I have. And now we're going to need the scalloped frame die again without knocking my scissors over. That was like operation. Um, and because we're going this way, this is fine. We don't need obviously the whole panel. We just need it to be able to line up at the bottom. Let's get rid of that. And then, so we can die cut that and then decide how much grass we want. So let's do that. Let's take that bit of memo tape that I was using earlier because it still has plenty of stickiness left in it. That's the good thing about memo tape. Okay. 
crochet with me. The other thing I could have used is some of the patterned paper that I hoard, apparently. So yes, we didn't do anything for the coronation either. Not sure if that makes us, uh, <laughs> yeah. I loved it in town though. I did go to town on Saturday. Had to take a dress in to be altered for a wedding at the weekend. And I have never seen town so quiet for a Saturday. It was insane. Right, so this is going to go here. And then I'm just going to pull it to the side a little bit so I can get an idea of where I want to put my grass. So the grass is going to go about there. And then my tree, this is where I have to work out roughly how much of it I want. The grass will be on, on top, I think, um, down here. So actually, I probably want it a little bit less about here. I think we don't want to cover that up maybe I will put it behind the tree actually yeah I will go a bit higher so we'll do that there I think and then actually no <laughs> changing my mind again maybe we won't chop this down and maybe we will sit it behind the grass so that you don't I don't need to chop that down and this is the um you could probably use this as grass as well at the bottom but this is for the the tree and then that will come down to about there and then that will leave this area for all our beautiful critters to go into i think the dog here bunny here maybe a couple of the birdies flying around i think that's going to come out really cute okay so we've got our grass laid out Let's move that to the side and get that cut out. And then we're going to want to do the same for the top. For that. So that's, let's get that out of the way. That's the grass down there. We can add a bit of ink blending into it as well. To darken it up if we need to let me get all this out of the way now that we've got that oops I pulled out seem to pull out every supply that I own or it always feels like I've pulled out every supply that I own <laughs> okay tidy up as you go along then you don't get yourself in such a pickle so I need actually some more white cardstock Again, we again don't need the whole lot, so I'm only going to die cut a small bit. This is going to be used for the, the leaves. But it's actually just going to be an ink, ink blend rather than actual leaves, I think. I'm thinking like pinky and whitey colours um, for like spring. All the blossom on the trees are coming out at the moment and it's absolutely beautiful. Oops, it's hanging off the plate a little bit there. I'm totally not a gardener, but I do love to look at all the pretty stuff outside. We've got a couple of cherry trees out the front that are gorgeous when they blossom. And we have an apple tree as well at the back that's just started to blossom. Right, so let's bring in the um, the leaves again. So let me just, again, bring this in. Should have done it before. To line up just roughly how much I want to cut. And we could always go back and cut more if we need to. See how much I've used this piece of memo tape? Amazing. And it's still sticky. And the price of it's really good too. And can I just say, I'm not saying this to sell you stuff, by the way. I am a genuine Heffy Doodle fan. <laughs> I'm not on the design team or anything. I'm just a genuine fan and just wanted to help out 
while Leslie was having her op. And while she's busy, I miss the lives myself, I think. So <laughs> it's like my weekly routine. I do love to watch Leslie's lives. So it's just for me, I think, to keep it going. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the branch. I think I can get rid of the die cutting machine again for a moment now. Or the die plate, shall I say. Okay, so I'm going to start with a lighter colour just so it's easier. So I actually wanted to do this like a blossomy colour. I actually want to see if, because I'm obviously going to post this, I wanted to see whether... I could shadow by masking the get well and then put the get well soon sentiment in the leaves because otherwise I think I'm going to run out of space for it. Um, so to do that, you can take a piece of memo tape that's the length or at least the length of that. Um, you may want to get a scrap piece of card as well to put it on if you're not depending on your die cutting plates i guess but i am going to because my plates are getting a little bit worn and you can cut a shadow from memo tape so if i just grab the die cutting machine um, this is so that we can mask it off we don't have to cut it out and make the card too bulky I'm just going to run, oops, should have put some more memo tape over the top to hold it in place. Okay, and then you may need to use a bit of nails or if you've got a picky tool, but if you just sort of pick it at the edge, you can usually peel it off, off of there. So obviously that would be the shadow die cut for the back of it. But what I wanted to do to make it not so bulky for posting is just mask the shadow. Let me get rid of that machine for a minute. And I'm just going to put this on here as straight as I can muster. And now we can ink blend round the mask on there just want to make sure it's stuck um and then when we peel it off it'll just have a white background for us to put our die cut letters into later so that's all another thing that you can use your memo tape for okay so let's get some pinks because that's what i was going for now i've got a couple of these are labeled but they're probably not labeled the right colors because i'm sure <laughs> at one point or another I've used used them for other stuff but what I was thinking is I can probably get away with it yeah there's nothing on there okay so I'm going to start with the lightest which is um spun sugar distress ink I'll pop that out there Kelly saying, just finished adding the final touches to Leslie's card. Oh, I can't wait to see. Are you going to post it and leave it for a while before you post it to the Instagram hashtag, Kelly? Or are you going to post it to the Instagram hashtag immediately? I'm a nightmare. I, <laughs> I either want to post things really quickly or if I can't post it because it's for a design team project or something... Um, or I make something and I'm like, oh, I'll save that because I've got a lot of things to share. And then I forget to share it. <laughs> so I'm coming in with um, Spun Sugar, which is the lightest pink or the lightest distress ink pink, I think. It is in my collection anyway. To start off with, I'm just going to coat the whole of the white around the shadow. And obviously when you're doing masking, sometimes you may want to go from the mask out so that it doesn't roll up um, like this. So I think this one needs a bit of uh, re-inking, this Distress Ink. 
but that's okay because um, I want it all to be sort of different colours. So if we end up with sort of white highlights in it almost, that's okay too. Oops, like that, I've just hooked it up. Okay, so that's sponge sugar. And then I thought maybe we could go for kitsch flamingo. So when I'm looking at the, the trees outside, you've got some like white highlights in it. So this is why I haven't gone too hard with the sponge sugar. And then the pink just gets deeper as it goes out. And then it's like darker on the outside. So I guess that's what I'm kind of trying to go for, I guess. Um, let me just bring in, this is a microfiber cloth and it just helps to soften up and take out some of the previous ink that you used because who can afford to have an ink brush for this um an ink brush for every color in your collection so i'm going to try and darken it up from the top down a little bit i think here and again i'm not even worried if it comes out really distressed and really random i think is what i'm trying to go for with these pinks You're going to try and wait to post it. Fair enough. Oops, I keep hooking it up now that I've done that. Should come from here out. I wasn't sure if I would get a new one made. She was actually maybe going to get an old recycled one that I made for one of her Instagram hops before. But um, here we go, Leslie. You're getting a new one, even though you may... <laughs> You may see it before it arrives, but never mind. That's okay too. Okay, so it's got a bit darker. And I think I'm going to come in with some picked raspberry on top of that. So that's Kitsch Flamingo. And then we've got picked raspberry. Again, I don't know which which brush is which so we'll just well this has probably got a bit more pinky ink on it than I was hoping that one's better that one's still got a lot of abandoned coral left on it I think so we'll leave that sometimes you, if you've used an ink brush over and over again you can sometimes just pick it up and use that same ink brush without even having to re-ink it so I'm going to start as you can see right off the card because I really only want to very much, gra like, literally almost just, I'm only just grabbing the page with this at the edge. Don't know how much of it you can see. But I'm, al I'm almost blending more on my mat than I am on the actual card and just very lightly coming in and putting some darker ink around the edge and I'm literally just touching it and I'm just going to go a little bit darker at the corner there and there and I really like that I'm just going to see if I can notch the uh, leaves at the bottom as well a little bit just to give some extra texture there we go and that is picked raspberry I do love the pinks. Right, let me get rid of those out of the way. Now on this as well, you could also like splatter it um, with some water, I guess. Um, and it would put a speckle effect, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to leave it like this. And now if we peel away the mask we have the shadow for when we die cut our word later i think that's gonna and it just if you are posting then it also you know just makes sure that you keep maybe some of the bulkiness away from it okay so i'm actually going to darken up the um this as well <laughs> um let me get rid of some of this pink thing She says, could have used that to splatter it, really. If I'd watered that down. <laughs> Problem with inks is they are water reactive. So when you're trying to clean your mat, it just starts to spread. Oh, thank you, Wendy. 
It's a good one, isn't it? Masking for your shadow. I do like depth in my cards, you know, if you're hand delivering and things, having real depth in your card with foam tapes and things, but co cost of postage these days is quite high. Okay, let me get rid of these brushes. And I'm just going to grab a green one. And I think this might have some ink left on it just to help me darken up without breaking the clip on it i think this has got rustic wilderness on the i don't know how much you can see that on the camera but it really is just darkening up the bottom of the cardstock and it's giving it an um a bit of a different contrast and then i can leave the top lighter Again, you may not see this too much on the camera, but it really does show in person. And I'm not, if I got more ink on the brush, then it maybe make it too dark and I didn't want to go too dark. There we go. So I don't know yeah, if you can see it, but it has just put an extra dark touch and then I've left it light at the top. So that's going to be our grass. And then we've got our pink. I'm sorry, Leslie, if you don't like pink. I can't remember. <laughs> I very much remember you don't like chocolate cake, but I don't know why. I can't remember if you like pink or not. Um, okay. Can I use first or second class to post it to her? Oh, um... Oh yeah, normal normal post, Kelly, normal post. Sorry, took me a moment to realise what you were asking. Yes, normal post, Scotland is fine. Um, I think it's parts of Ireland that um, may have some slightly different posts on them. But um, yeah, you should be fine to Scotland, just standard, standard post. Okay, so we now need some brown ink. So I've got this and... I don't want to use them. I'm going to use gathered twigs because it just sounds the most appropriate. Do you know, out of all the coloured cardstock I have in my stash, brown is one of those that I don't have. It's really bizarre. Um, really bizarre. Okay, so, oops. It's all right. We're going to hide that behind the... Hide that behind the... Um, grass anyway okay so just darkening this up and again it doesn't matter if some areas of this are darker than others because obviously bark is different anyway and most of this top bit's going to get covered so if you're messy at the top it's fine um i'm actually quite happy with that how it's already We've got a couple of darker notches there, which is brilliant. We'll probably find we'll cover most of that up. Just darken this bit up as well. There we go. And I'm not worried about the top because, um, as you see, the, the, the leaves will cover it anyway. So let me get rid of that ink. And this brown brush. And now I want to die cut my peekaboo hole before I forget. So this should fit through my little machine. I remember where I put the plates. Oops. I should probably wait for the ink to dry a minute. And that's probably got a bit loose because I used it to hold the cardstock while I was ink blending. So that's the other thing I use it for to hold so that my fingerprints don't end up on the um on the project shall i say i do love my little heffy doodle mini die cutting machine it's so handy just to get on oh i cut it upside down guys i'm gonna have to start again after all that effort, it's because I'm talking away. <laughs> Never mind. Where's 
got gone. You can all have a laugh at that. Where did I put? Um, I had some off cuts, but never mind. Please tell me I'm not the only one that does things like that. <laughs> let's, oh, I started ink blending on it, didn't I? That's why. Never mind. Let's start again. Let's start again. <laughs> oh, I was really happy with my ink blending there as well. <laughs> It's only cardstock. I won't cry. <laughs> Don't think this is going to fit through this machine on its own, unfortunately. It is just a little bit too big. Let me um, get the other one out. Did I see that Leslie the other day shared her card on Instagram and she had done the base the wrong way? I've done that many times too. Let's try again. Right, we've got to get rid of this for a moment. <laughs> Let's just sit that there. So if you weren't here at the beginning, I was saying, and again, now that I've cut it um, here, that's fine. We just need to snip. I've just realised I've got the wrong scissors. They're my, they're my horrible gunky scissors. Okay, you just on this die, you snip along the top. And the reason Leslie did that was to give you more real estate on the die itself. Because she's all about value for money. Getting more for your money. There we go. Right, now I need to do the wood grain again. And I completely put that one away, didn't I, guys? Yeah, I think I did. So let me get that again, put this one away before I forget and lose it. Take two, <laughs> definitely not alone, says Wendy. Okay, let's try again. So for those of you that don't know, um, I am building a YouTube channel because I would like to be able to do lives over there at some point and also it's easier to go live with other people. So I'd appreciate if you would follow me over there at Jasmine Crafty Makes and I do load these replays there as well. So if you've missed my previous lives, you can find them over there. I think the only annoying thing if you're watching the replay on YouTube is you don't see the original comments here on Facebook. So sometimes it can probably feel a bit odd about what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, let's try this again and hopefully I do not screw it up. Good job I didn't completely put the brown ink away. At least I can still use the original piece of sticky tape that's not going to stick anything else. Just to keep my fingers away. And I am literally just being really generous with the brown ink because I don't, it doesn't need to take you forever. And if you end up with darker areas, it really doesn't matter. I better not cut it wrong this time. <laughs> Could you imagine? Don't think you're going to see much of this top one by the time I put the branch, the, the leaves. Why is that word? That's really struggling with that today. Okay. So let's try this again. Get it the right way this time. That goes at the top. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if it's going to quite fit through here. I may have to put it through the um, other machine. 
even though I'm probably going to chop it down I don't want to chop it down just yet so let me just run this through the other one and this is where I definitely need smaller plates for the smaller elements <laughs> Take two, let's hope I've done it the right way. Yay! Now I may have got a bit thin on that side, but that's okay. I'm not doing it a third time. <laughs> Leslie, just be delicate with your fingers. <laughs> okay, let me get those out of the way. Out the way. Get some of this cleaned up because I cannot do that background while it's this inky. Because putting brown in a nice background is not going to be nice. We need a blue sky, I think. Nice sunny blue sky underneath it. And maybe just darken up some green again at the bottom behind the grass. I used to... <laughs> maybe overcomplicate my cards a little bit and I would maybe die cut three or four of these but sometimes I think you don't need to and again I'm trying to keep away from it being too bulky oh Wendy I'm not sure if you found the right channel then I've only got 20 odd subscribers at the moment <laughs> I think that I noticed, though, that someone else had a very similar name on YouTube to mine. Very similar, but not my channel. Um, yes, I, I, I did wonder about changing it, but then it wouldn't have been in keeping with my Pinterest and my Instagram. So I did keep it the same. If you can see some heavy doodle like videos there, then you're on you're in the right place. Okay, so I'm going to do some green at the bottom. Um, I'm going to come in with at first a really dark one. Just I'm going to try and plan it just to this point at the top where this finishes before we get a bit lighter. So I need some of this to keep my fingers off the project as much as I can. So this is a really dark green. This is um, forest moss. Like I said, I'm only going to, and this doesn't matter that I have this darker area because it's going to be covered up with the, the grass that I've already cut. But if I go from the top up, it means I can get it a bit lighter than where it's darker at the bottom which you're not going to see anyway not quite there a little bit more up i'm going to come in with a lighter one There we go. And now that I've got more ink on this brush, I'm actually going to just try and darken up the corners again a little bit more on this one. I'll try and pick up some of this ink from the mat. There we go. See, you can definitely make supplies stretch, even if it's on your mat. <laughs> just pick it up. <laughs> okay. Still managed to get an inky print up there, but I didn't want to. Okay, so now I need a lighter green. I definitely want to get rid of this dark. But I'm going to keep the darker brush out so that I can show you how to ink blend lines together. Um, I can probably reuse that. I use tissue to dry my mat because otherwise the um, the wet ink gets on the 
the project. So I'm actually going to come in with mode lawn. Oh, you only have 550. You should be able to go live. I was told. Oh, maybe you, you need a thousand to go live on your desktop, maybe. But once I've got 50 subscribers, it tells me I should be able to go live from my phone, which is the only tool that I have anyway at the moment. Um, so my my aim is a little bit lower than a thousand subscribers. Okay, so I'm just going to come in with a lighter. This is Mowed Lawn. I'm actually not worried too much about how my ink blending maybe looks today because most of it will be covered up anyway. So when you're doing this, you want to bring it down a little bit over where you finished the last ink blend. And if you really don't like your ink blend line, you can come back in with the brush of the darker colour and just go back over that line again. And it starts to blend them together and then come back in with the lighter one again. And again, do the same thing and it will start to get rid of the harsh line that, that you maybe are looking at. And it just blends them together nicely. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so it looks now like we've got a little muddy track, which I like because, you know, when you're walking, you maybe have grass one side, mud and then grass again. Um, and then obviously the dog will be this side and maybe the bunny there. So let's get some blue. Oops. So I'm going to have that there. And this is going to go at the top. So, yeah, I'm just going to go for a, a one blue tone, I think, for the sky. Let's get rid of these brushes out the way. You can on your phone. Yeah, that's, that's all I need to be able to do at the moment. What? Oh, Kelly says, what colour ground hill should I do? I'm doing a night sky background. Um... I would go like, um, I don't know really, a deep blue, like really deep colour I think. If you're going for a night sky look, depends if you've got a moon in it that might brighten things up. <laughs> okay, so I need a, a blue brush. Let's go for this one. Um... Yeah, I think I'd go for a really darker colour, especially if it's like a night sky, unless you've got a big moon already in the picture that may brighten it up. I am looking for that blueprint sketch without knocking over. For some reason, it's tucked right behind the brushes, so let's try not to knock it over. Just going to come down. Get rid of that for a moment. What did, oh, it's all right. That's that blue anyway, so that's fine. It'll be covered up. Just going to come right down to the green with this. Again, most of it's going to be covered up, so probably doesn't matter if your ink blending is not necessarily perfect. I think I, this is one of the brushes that I really should wash. It's getting a bit stiff and weird but it also gives a nice sky texture stir in my view so I'm also okay with it <laughs> just trying to blend it into the green line a little bit there we go okay so we're gonna have grass we may need to chop down our tree a little bit Because that's going to go about there. But you can always stick it down and then chop it down later, like afterwards. This is then going to go there. And then this is, oops, throwing it around. And I really like how this is turning out. Okay, so we've got our background. Oops. 
So let's get some, now that we know what colours we've got in here, let's get some colouring on the stamps. Because I can put pinks and greens in the, into the flowers. I don't think I need this anymore, so let's put this away. We could maybe add some flowers from this set. I've just noticed that it's got little, little flowers in there. Probably clean the mat as well. Get rid of some of this ink. Otherwise, everything's going to start mixing together. Okay. So we have already stamped the images, so if you missed it at the start, I've got a few sets out here. Let me get rid of that wonky bunny that I stamped first time. So we have a dog, a bunny, a squirrel, and some flowers and a box of chocolates. Again, may not use it all, may need more. Let's see how it goes. We can die cut as we go along and start sort of building the scene before we stick it all together. Yeah, okay, so I wanted to go for like a gray bunny. So I'm gonna go for my warm grays. We've got a W7 here. And I am just gonna go for some very basic coloring here. Very, very basic. So I always go, let me know how you colour. So some people I hear colour the whole thing light and then go and put in some dark shadows. But I've always coloured dark, like this, dark to light. So that's W7. And then we're coming in with W9. And just extend on wherever you put your first lot of colour. You don't have to be a professionalist for this. So I think I was saying earlier how I popped into town on Saturday to have a dress altered. And it was quieter than a weekday. It was really bizarre. I was able to go in and out of shops. There was no crowds. Nothing. I loved it. And I usually hate town. So now I'm going to come in with a W3. So for those who don't know, um, it's not a big wedding, <laughs> but my mum is getting married. So we are off to Brighton next weekend for that, because that's where she lives. So this is W3, and I'm just going to go all the, on the, the tail with W3 and keep the tail really light. And then I'm going to come in with W1 to blend out all that colour. And then we'll just bring in a very light pink for the inside of the ear. So I went to the dress shop. And they'd already altered it once before. But I keep losing weight, so I had to take it back. She was like, um, it's a, it'll be a week. And I was like, okay, I need it at least one day before. <laughs> so I've just got to hope it's okay. Um, I had to buy an emergency dress. Oh, sorry, lots of comments here. Won't be able to hear you for a moment. Using my heat tool. Uh, no worries, Kelly. Uh, Luanne says, I colour dark first like you do. And then Wendy says, I do dark to light too. I love colouring. Ah, good. It's very therapeutic, isn't it? So I've just picked out the R20. And you may not see that on the camera, but it's a very light pink. I'm actually going to put 
just again not sure how much you'll see it a little dot on the cheek so it's like a little rosy cheek and you can see it more probably in person okay so we also need to so we've got a gray bunny and actually i think the bunny might be cute holding the chocolates i mean because we all like chocolates right so i'm going to go for i think we could get away with putting some yellows into this if i did the birds maybe in yellow too to make it all sort of chirpy so if we go for a yellow box like the box itself yellow i'm gonna go for y19 Y19. And then Y15. Might feel like a big jump, but this one's actually okay. And then Y11, which is just the palest colour. I'm going to leave that marker blend out for the birdies, I think. So let's leave that there for a moment. And then to tie in, I think we'll go for pink ribbon. Um, that's, I say pink. Does anyone have a preferred pink marker blend? I'm actually going to see. They always feel so bright. Um, so this is R29. And it is a bit bright. Never mind. Never mind. RV20. Oh, wrong end. Oh, does anyone actually use the, the chisel end for anything? Or I have seen that people swap them out so that they've got both nib ends. This is RV25 and now we've gone really luminous. Whoopsie daisy. Um, maybe this one will blend it out a bit better. This is RV23. Oh, that dulls it out a bit. That's that's okay. That's dulled it out a bit, so that's fine. Doesn't feel so luminous and in my face now. Yeah. So then, obviously, we want to make sure that the flowers also have similar colours in so that we're not putting too much into the scene. So for the small ones, this is what we took from Happily Ever Crafter. I am going to go for this pink blend again. So the RV29 for the outer the outer what's the wrapping that goes around flowers like cellophane or something i don't know so that was rv it's quite a small area to blend out so i've kept it very small so that the rv 23 blends out that harsh pink and then we're probably going to then want to make sure we've got some like at least one or two pink flowers in here so i'm just going to do the brighter oh this is not the darkest rv29 in the middle i'm literally dotting it I'll do that one one two oh let's go for three and then the rv25 just again because it's a small area just dot it out a little bit and then when you come in with your rv23 i actually don't mind that it looked like a really harsh pink blend like really bright but it has the rv23 really dulls it down so that's okay i'm not mad at it um so we've got some obviously like green leaves going on in here but they're such small areas i'm actually just going to grab that's too bright one green green color and just fill in those leaves such a small area you don't have to worry about blending then you've got one two three on there as well so that was geo5 uh, in my greens but obviously any color and i think actually we could maybe get away with the yellow in these flowers as well i'm gonna go in these ones one on there so that's the y19 i'm actually just going to jump it to y11 and just blend it out because it's such a small area and then just put the y19 dot you probably cannot even see that on camera 
Um, I feel like we're about to put too much colour in if I put too many other things in. But because obviously we do have like this white here, you could grab your lightest grey, like W1 or w C1, and take away the harshness of the white from these, but still kind of keeping them white if you wanted to. I think that's fine. And then with this one, what colour should we do that? I might come back to that. I'm going to colour my birds while I have a think about what colour we do that wrap. Let me know. So let's go for a bright yellow birdie. At least two, I think, should be yellow. And then maybe we could get away with like a blue one because we do have some blue in here as well. Maybe that's what I could do the wrap for, blue. So that was Y19, this is Y15. And then Y11. And again, I might keep their bodies whitish and just come in with a W1 again and take away from some of the harshness of the white. We have so many birds around here. Does, does anyone else? <laughs> I could sit and watch them for hours. Um, I'm just going to grab the W. Oh, chunky end again. Chisel end to do the beaks. Because there's such a small area. So I'm going to wait for the other bird. Let's move on because actually we're probably going to put another colour in it with the squirrel. What colour squirrel should we go for? I think like a um like a ready squirrel but like a ready brown I guess. We could go E09 E07 and E04. And if you're ever unsure you can test your markers. Again it's only cardstock. I quite like this. It's um it's like a ready brown. Well, we don't really have, um, well, not that I see anyway. We have, most of our squirrels are grey. So this is E09. But I think you, you see more of them maybe in the countryside of different colours. Different colours. Just doing some strokes up there. It might not work. It might not end up blending out this way, but... We can only try. Can only give it a go. So has anyone got any exciting plans for this week? Back to work for me tomorrow. And then off for me to Brighton at the weekend. I'm just looking forward to the clo <laughs> clothes shopping while I'm there, to be honest. Um, so this is E07. It's not that much different to the E09, actually. So we may want to come in with the E09 again to darken that up. But let's see. Let's see. Almost kind of reminded me like of a brick colour <laughs> rather than a red squirrel. Never mind. Yeah, I'm going to darken it up again with the E09 at the end. So what's the weather like where everyone is today? Because I always find in the UK we always have such different weather at the different ends of the country. It is, it was miserable this morning. So full on raining. I'm coming back to the E09 here just to put some back in. And then about two hours before I was due to start this live, it just stopped raining. So we went out for a dog walk. And I think it's due to rain again. Hi, Amy. Raining like mad. 
Oh, I feel like I've missed loads of comments here where I was concentrating. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, Wendy says, I definitely need Copics in my life. I love how many shades of each colour they have. Yes, they are um, fantastic. I started with Spectrum Noir. I actually still have some Spectrum Noir markers. Um, and I do love them. Um, they're great for like, maybe I can pull one out to get a different shade of pink for this because I feel like I want to keep this in a, a pinky theme. Um, so maybe I can pull it out because their pinks and their purples, actually all of their colours are very different to the Copics. Um, but with Copics, if you ever do decide, I'm just going to come in with the EO4. If you ever do decide to buy them, my only tip is don't do what I did and start with one of the sets. Because the sets don't um, necessarily have blends in them. So I'm just, I've just done EO4 here. I'm coming in with EO2. I'm just going to keep the facial area really light and the belly area really light. I would definitely recommend that you buy them in blends that you will use. So if you've got a preferred colour combo that you would want to start with, I would buy them in sets of blends. But I do love my Copic markers. Mine need a bit of a clean, but I do love them. <laughs> I'm so glad you got to join too, Amy. Are you crafting today? You love the pinky tree. Thank you very much. I love your squirrel colours. Thank you. Yes, it's raining like mad. Um, I think it's going to start up. I'm just trying to look out the window. I think my dog also knows that it's raining today. Um, okay, so for, the, for this dog, um, let's go for... Because now we've got a ready squirrel, I think we can get away with maybe putting some browns in. But I'm going to go for this blend, I think. So here we go. Markers out everywhere, if you don't know me. <laughs> the markers are everywhere. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm going to go for E18, E17, E15 and E11. So Amy, you missed the start, but I'm making a Get Well Soon card for Leslie. So this is E18, and I know that that means that she may see it if she watches the replay, but I'm likely to probably post it and hashtag it before it actually arrives in her inbox anyway. <laughs> or in her post box, shall I say, not in her inbox. <laughs> Please don't, I'm not the only one. I'm hopeless at posting things. I have the always have the best intentions of posting things. Like when I came to see you, Amy, I mean, how long had I had that stamp set that I said I'd post and then I just ended up seeing you and just giving it to you in person. <laughs> Amy says she's just finished setting up her crafty space back after moving house. So I'm trying to do a bit of crafting. Oh, yay. It's nice that you have a space set up now for it as well. So I have been actually doing a lot of mermaid colouring as there's a colouring challenge going on over in one of the other groups and on Instagram so if you want to find out about that that's you can find out about that on my Instagram page Jasmine Crafty Makes um so there's a lot of mermaids for me so this is quite a nice change for the day just gonna put a bit more in the tummy so that's E18 and then I was gonna go for E17 Amy, did you know what time Leslie's operation was? I'm not sure if she's been in or not yet. But that's actually a point because that threw me off when she said that she couldn't do it today because I didn't realise that Scotland didn't get the same bank holiday as us when it, when it came to the King. I didn't realise that they wouldn't get today. It's just an odd day for an operation to be booked on, I guess. For me, anyway, like you would obviously wouldn't have that in our hospitals today, unless it was an emergency. So that's E17. Yeah, no, I don't know either. We'll have to message her later. Okay. So I'm going to come in really light in the middle. So this is E15. And as you can see, I'm very roughly colouring. We'll call it basic. 
because once your card comes together, I really don't think that the colouring is the focus. It's not the first thing I look at on your card, I can promise you that anyway. So this is E11. I'm going to take off the other end because this one blobs on me otherwise. So again, if you're new to Copic markers, your sketch markers can sometimes be a bit inky. I've not had it with my chow. The, so you get them in two versions. You've got the round chow, which are cheaper. And then you've got these oval shaped, which are the sketch. Um, you can't get all of the colours in the chow version. So if you're happy to mix and match, that is the way to keep the cost down. If the colour is available in chow, then I have been getting them in chow. Even though I prefer to hold the sketch markers and that is nothing to do with the ink like the amount of ink that it holds I just prefer the shape the holding the shape of the sketch markers but I'm sure we all have our own preferences okay so that was E11 and I'm just going to come in with the C7 which is one of the cool greys to do the nose and I've just left a white dot like almost like a highlight but if you're not confident enough to do that you can always use a white gel pen to put a highlight in the nose or you can even use it to brighten it up if you want to it's totally up to you or you don't have to do that at all it's just <laughs> something that I saw once probably from Leslie and it's just stuck with me oh so I'm so far behind <laughs> colouring away and talking um Wendy says a lot of hospitals have started doing weekends and bank holidays to try and catch up oh waiting times I went for an MRI on Sunday not long ago and it was dead except for the department that you went to interesting Yes, they do, Kelly, but I wasn't going to necessarily promote that here, unfortunately. Uh, this card is going to be so cute. Leanne says, thank you very much. Right, let's get these out my way because otherwise I'm just never going to be able to construct it around all these Copic markers. So that was the browns. Or at least some of them out of the way because I'm going to pull in the Spectrum Noir markers and just have a look at maybe bringing in some of the pinks from the spectrum noir that's maybe not too bad i think that could work let me just check this may be the bright one yeah that's too bright that was like the copper blend that i didn't want to use and then you have got a bright pink blend but again very luminous so i'm gonna go for I, this is one of my favorites but it's very purpley this is a pink violet yeah it's definitely um more of a purple blend look but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> so wendy you you said you wanted copics what brand of markers do you use at the moment do let me know okay so i'm gonna come in with this on this one so I originally, when I started crafting, I started with the very old school Spectrum Noirs. I think they were even before the classics. They came in like boxes of like 24, I think. And um, I love them. But then when they started needing ink refills, they changed all the colour formulas and I never had a full set anyway. So then I started collecting the tri-blends, which are fabulous for small images. But um, when you definitely want to colour bigger images and you want more of a colour range, the Copic markers are good for that. Oh, stamping up blends. I've never used those, but Amy, I think you may have used them. Did you have those when I came to visit the Stampin' Up! ones, or did you have something else? Can't remember. And I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to put a pinky bird in just to, to tie it in. That's what I've decided. 
<laughs> one random pink bird why not <laughs> I'm sure they exist somewhere a pinky maybe in like some parrots or something oops see these are definitely great for small areas and where that w1 gone let's just take away that harsh harsh belly i'm actually going to just fill it completely i did leave a white highlight but i've decided i don't like it <laughs> i think um my sets were probably originally the old school Spectrum Noirs were probably from somewhere like BMM, B and M, or um, is it a hobby craft? I think I want to say. Wow, I just I've just looked clocked at the time. I've been here for quite a while. I'm sorry if I'm bored. <laughs> chatting away. Probably the longest live I've done to date. <laughs> well, not quite. I think one was an hour and forty minutes, but. We're not too far off now. Right, so don't let me forget. Well, I'm not going to be able to forget to put the, the word die in. I'm actually going to start constructing this together. But I need to chop off. Need to chop it off. Down here. So that's okay. Actually, that's a good line. Look, that where it's that's a good line there, and it looks like I can probably. Well, it's done now. So if I couldn't, it's done now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do it like that. So for this one, I'm going to use some adhesive glue. Just gonna stick it like that so that we're just on the inside here. Um, so let me grab a glue bird and this. Obviously, we don't want to glue the flappy bit, so we need to make sure that we put glue around that. And if you haven't met glue bird, please meet glue bird. Glue bird is your craft glue for your craft room, and he's just adorable. So let's get some glue. I just love the tiny precision tip bottle. I used to hate adhesive like liquid glue, but I've learned to love it because it means that you can reposition things now i'm just going to lift this up so that just in case any glue decides to squirt out anywhere it doesn't start to stick that down and now it should be it doesn't matter now that i've cut it a little bit close to the edge there okay oh here we go bit of glue escape in there okay so now we want the grass but i'm just going to use i'm going to cheat <laughs> Well, I don't think it's cheating. Whatever makes your life easier. I'm just going to use some double-sided sticky tape. Along here. Sometimes people worry about double-sided sticky tape and it, it not lasting. But honestly, well, this roll, these rolls that I have, <laughs> I've had for a while and I use on all my cards. And I have cards that have probably been sat in my drawer now for a good two years or so. And they're very much still stuck together. So, you know, if, you, if you're if you unsure, maybe just make a card. <laughs> Stick it in your drawer for a couple of years. And see how you get on. So obviously where I've used the... Whoopsie daisy. We've gone a little bit wonky there. But I cannot fix that now because I used double-sided sticky tape. And that's where adhesive glue comes in play. But, again, you can barely see it, so it's okay. Um, okay, so then we'll do the same for this. See if I can get this one lined up properly. And then... Oh, Concentrating on the card, can't keep an eye on the card. 
I did get some of the Stampin' Up! blends, but couldn't get them to blend the way I wanted. I have lots of pens now. <laughs> lots of variations. a little bit down here as well got to decide what color to cut the word dye out of as well it's probably going to be pink or yellow isn't it <laughs> just to keep in the theme keeping in the color theme whoops let's go the other end i've just realized i'm wearing my yellow jumper today as well my uh sherbet lemon heffy doodle hoodie I'm going to go from the top for this one because it'll be more noticeable if I don't get it as well lined up. There we go. I just realised now I may not be able to tuck my squirrel in there as much as I wanted to because I stuck it down. Oh no, we're all right. I, I did leave a, a nice little gap there. Let's get rid of this end. Okay, so now let's die cut the critters We're from my 101 sets that I use. Where did I put those behind me? So I have got all the coordinating dies. So we've got the flowers, haven't we? And this one's not on a magnet, so this will be interesting. Let's hope I don't fling them everywhere. I want oh look it's the one that's still stuck in the packet that one I am slowly getting there with the magnet sheets guys I just happened to pick out a set that I haven't done it for yet <laughs> put those in there so we don't lose them and bring back out the die cutting machine So we've got this bunch of flowers here that I think we're probably going to put in the dog's mouth. More memo tape. Going through the memo tape on this card. Okay. Whoops. Spit them out the other side. So we've got flowers. I did have some more sets to take some more elements from. But I'm not sure we're now going to need them now that I'm seeing how it's building up. Right, let's get that one out of the way. Like I said at the beginning, I have bright ideas and then my cards end up being absolutely huge. I have even made... <laughs> cards bigger sometimes to just fit in the whole idea that I had right so then we also have the the little bunch of flowers from the happily ever crafter here oops this one's a little bit smaller to line up Oh, Amy, I forgot to um, reply to your message earlier, but did you book the ticket for Stamparama? So then we've got the little bunch of flowers that can maybe go with the squirrel or something. I think I saw my ticket come through, but they still haven't listed the exhibitors. That I see anyway. Right, so we don't need that one anymore. Um, or did I? Oh, I did pull it away. Oh, what a donut. Someone should have shouted at me. I need the box of chocolates too. <laughs> what a donut. Oh, thanks, Amy. Now, where's the box of chocolates? Or am I going to have to fussy cut it? See? The, oh. There's, there's, no, it's the heart, isn't it? What a donut. I'm thinking of a square box of chocolates. <laughs> Clearly got chocolate on the brain. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to treat myself to some today. 
I had a bit of a migraine yesterday, actually, and I had to do a live in another group <laughs> as part of a retreat. And I just, my brain wasn't with it. I even went live an hour early. <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't. I might have to look again. You didn't get a ticket or you didn't pre-order? Maybe it was Alison that, that pre-ordered her ticket. <laughs> okay. Box of chocolates. Uh, now I can put this one away again. Maybe it was Alison that pre-ordered her ticket. Um, It's coming up. I think it's on the 4th of June or something. Let me know if you can go. We can go together. For those of you in the UK, we have a craft show called Stamparama and I think they do like three or four different locations and one of them is coming closest to us, I would say, in Newbury. It's not too far and I have really enjoyed craft shows and Amy introduced me to my first one and <laughs> I've been to a... You didn't bring all the order. <laughs> Uh, well, the pre-order price was only a pound cheaper than um, the price now. So you can go and grab a ticket now, I would say. That's not the right one, is it? No, that's not the right one. If you can go, it was, looks really fun. I'm sure I thought this was the right one, but it's not. I'm getting too much stuff in my way now, look. This is, oh look, I bet you it's that one I haven't cut out yet. It is, isn't it? I clearly hadn't used this particular squirrel. That's okay. That's why I've got these jewellery snips here. I should try not to keep you all too much longer, but thank you for hanging out with me. It's so much fun to be able to talk to people and have people like here to craft along with me, even if it means I make a mistake because I was too distracted talking and I had to do something again. <laughs> I don't know if I'll have started my new job by then, but I think that is what... Oh, okay. Well, I think, I don't think the tickets are going to, um, like, sell out, so putting that away already without having put this back so maybe we can have a look at nearer to the time and also if you're able to maybe you can come to that dog and craft fair one in like near brighton in july because i'm really excited for that one i mean two of my favorite things in one place dogs and crafts like it's just a dream Oh, I should have got the birds birds out of there while I was in there. See? I'm not doing very well at the multitasking today. So, yeah, I want to tuck the squirrel in there, inside, probably holding the very small bunch of flowers because it, it definitely works. The, the big bunch would have been very overwhelming for that small squirrel. So now I need to find the birds. Here we go, pouring my dyes out again. There's one, one birdie, two birdies. I managed to pick the, some sets that I didn't put the magnet sheets in. I'm sure I will regret that one day. But never mind. Here we are. Okay, so we've got a yellow birdie here. I'm actually going to snip that off because that's getting a bit annoying. Whoops. So I've just realised this must be nearly dinner time. Well, it is for me anyway. And I'm going to ask you guys the same thing, that we have the same conversation about this time every day at work. And seeing as it's a bank holiday and I'm not at work today, <laughs> what have you got for dinner? <laughs> because I need some inspiration. And I don't have my work colleagues today to give me that inspiration. So I'm asking you guys... Uh, this sounds fun. There's Craftorama 21st of May in Lincolnshire Showground. Can, oh, your comment's long. I need to click see more, Kelly. Hang on. Yeah, ours is, the one that I'm booked to go to is the 2nd of June in Newbury. 
Newbury is the closest one to us. I think I did look at the Kent one, but again, I think the Newbury one was the closest to us. I'm going to sit that little birdie there and then that kind of covers that anyway. Uh, now I stamped two of one of them, I think maybe. Maybe the... No, it was the other one I stamped twice. Of course it was. Just need to get rid of this little sharp bit. Ooh, corned beef hash. Haven't had corned beef hash in ages. I don't even think I have any. I've got potatoes, but I don't think I have any corned beef. Might have to put that on the shopping list. <laughs> that bird may not stay there. We'll see. I'm just sort of laying... Laying it out and seeing how it goes. Oops. Corned beef hash. Oh, I'm starving now. <laughs> That's made me hungry. I feel like I can smell it, <laughs> even though it's not cooking. Sausage, chips and beans. No, it's... That's... Do you know what? That sounds exciting to me, though, Amy. Because... That was actually something that I used to have a lot for dinner. But beans is something that I don't have as often anymore. Because, um, obviously I'm not scared, don't want to scare you off. But yeah, for, for me, for losing weight, the calorie content in beans was like huge for, for me for a dinner. And I like my food. So I was like, right, I need to even it out a bit more. So I now only really have beans once a week. Um... We had them on Friday night, actually, with our fish and chips. <laughs> fish, chips and beans. Right, um, right, we're done with the squirrels, I think, now, she says, and then she'll probably want something else from it. So then we've got the Wrapped With Love stamp set, and these are on a very small, because I, when I did this one, I was running out. So we want the bunny. Where's the bunny? Where's the bunny? get the jewelry snips out again actually i think that one's a little bit small sometimes when the area in between are very small you can just literally like wiggle them apart i do love this bunny i think it's adorable i think all oh, that's gone a bit unsticky that article i think i may have to go and look that up but i was listening to the radio earlier today uh radio one i think it was and they were saying um how one of the presenters has like a caesar salad from one of the shops like every day for lunch and um all they heard like was this scream from the kitchen and they ran in and the presenter was like washing their mouth out and all the presenter could do was like point at the um point at the salad bowl and there was like a half eaten spider in there. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Just <laughs> okay, so we could either have I think actually the bunny should hold the chocolates because Obviously, dogs shouldn't eat chocolate, so it feels a bit weird to put the the flowers in the dog's in the dog's mouth. Um, okay, so let's put this lot away. It's like I had a bad incident with, and I'm sure most of you. I'm not even going to say it really, like the full thing. But I had a bad incident with Ferrero Rocher's once and that put me off for life like literally put me off for life even though again i can still like like i could taste them if i think about them and they are lovely but you know when yeah when you just have a bad incident yourself it just puts you off doesn't it like yeah i have quite a phobia of milk as well <laughs> like 
not not awful like um where i can't use it in my cereal and things like that but like if someone is in front of me and drinks a glass of milk like that i i can see it's a you know like a clear glass if it's in a mug and i don't know what it is i'm fine but yeah it makes me feel ill it's just so bizarre i must have had a bad experience as a kid and it has taken me a while to be able to have like milk with my breakfast and things but also with my breakfast milk i don't actually eat the milk or drink the milk like i have it there as like the soakner <laughs> and then the rest goes down the sink when i'm done <laughs> um, yeah there you go something weird about me <laughs> Okay, so I think that was everything I had coloured. So that means I'm actually going to put him up here a bit more to fill that area. And then bring in the birdie here. That works well there, that works well there. And then that there. And I think actually I'll just add um some gems and things around here when we get to the end and he's going inside so now i need to die cut the word to go in and i'm sorry if you start to hear my dog bark she's got a bone like a, a marrow bone <laughs> and when she first like licks it <laughs> she gets like the head rush from it like this like yeah it's funny it's funny to watch her she starts pouncing around <laughs> Okay, let's get some. Let me get this away first of all because I'll get myself on a pistol. We need some yellow cardstock, I think. Do I want yellow? Yeah, I think yellow. No, it's not in there. Let me open this away from the thing. Wendy says, Amy, it has taken me a while to get the hang of them, but I think I want Coppics now. Oh, you're talking about your stamping up blends. Um, Wendy, have you ever ordered... Here we go. Now I am going to try and get something. Um, have you ever ordered from Colt Pens in the UK? They quite often have some fabulous offers on... Copic markers which is how I build my collection now I buy a few at a time from there when they've got some good offers on but if you're looking to purchase I can send you a link to get 10% off but it only works if you've never ordered from there before and that offer goes for anybody in the UK <laughs> I actually, they recently updated their website and I'm so chuffed because they now do gift cards. They never used to do gift cards on their old website. So every time someone was like, oh, what do you want for a present? I did message them once going, do you do gift cards? And I'm just being blind, like can I, I can't see them. But apparently their old website had some like limitations or something. But they now do gift cards, so guess what I'm going to be asking for <laughs> I'm going to be asking for gift cards for Colt pens so that I can continue to get Copic markers I noticed I was going through my list the other day though like what I still needed and what I need is either like really high of the range or really low I seem to have a lot of the middle stuff now which makes it easier to get different blends so I'm not too worried about getting the full collection just yet oh that's really bright and beautiful well i think it is anyway <laughs> okay let's get that back out of the way and get that away so i don't lose it that there. I will try and remember to send you the link, Wendy, or if not, um, message me <laughs> if I forget. I'll probably go from here on to doing some dinner or something. Copics are really good, to be honest, especially when I was really good as well, especially the illustrator pens. I've 
because I started getting those from you, didn't I, Amy? I actually really found I struggled. I think the... And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the brush on the illustrators is a little bit thicker. Oh, I just started painting my nails, look, with Copic markers. And I think I really struggled with that. And even though that some of my Copics are very inky sometimes, like, over, like overfilled with ink, I guess is the best description. Um, I just struggled with that with the illustrators, personally. But again, everyone has their own preference i think okay let's get some of this stuff stuck down then so actually um because this get well soon is quite thin um i'm gonna put some glue on a piece of memo tape <laughs> that's the other thing i use it for and bring in a stick which is a bit big let me get rid of the end of it. This is just like, it was a really long cocktail stick that we used for toasting marshmallows one year. Um, but if you've got a little cocktail stick or something, don't need that. Um, that works really well as well. And I find it's just easier to control where I'm, especially on very thin word dies like this. It just helps me to control where I'm putting it. Um, so I'm just going to put some dots Try not to get my head in the way under the camera because if I go from the bottle directly onto these thin, thin dies, I just make a mess. Use the silence while I concentrate. Trying to keep my head out of the way, but also get it on there. <laughs> Somewhat straight, I guess, is the word. Oh, that'll do. <laughs> Embrace the wonkiness. <laughs> it wouldn't be handmade if it was perfect, would it? <laughs> so don't forget that if you do get to make a card for Leslie, whether you post it or not, it doesn't matter, you can hashtag it. You can also enter it into the Heffy Doodle monthly challenge which is also sort of get well soon theme so you can definitely get more for your card that you make and it doesn't even have to say get well soon you know anything would be anything cheerful even if it said hello like everyone would love to receive any type of card while they're laid up in bed i think doesn't have to say get well soon or speedy recovery. You could just say hello or send in hugs or something like that. Sending hugs across the across the pond. I say embrace the wonkiness, but I think I've come too far over. <laughs> I think I've come too far this way. Never mind. It still works, it still works. And I really think that that pops really well on that white, white background. Okay, so we need to try and tuck him inside. Can I get him in there? I can just about slot him in just about get him in there I think didn't leave quite enough glue space but this is just a disaster waiting to happen <laughs> these are just going to go everywhere you can use your like tweezers which I thought I'd done when I stuck it down just to lift it up a little bit go on in you go in you go mister in you go 
There we go. Just tuck him in. You can see his tail a little bit, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay. And then I'm just going to, because it, it was a bit fiddly, next time, don't do the same mistake as me. And realise that you want to put something inside it first. <laughs> but that's okay. And then just take the little flowers. I did just use the stick to put some glue behind it to, to stick him down in there as well. Again, it wouldn't be perfect if it wasn't handmade. <laughs> Can I get that? I want to tie and tuck it in a little bit. But I'm going to have to come in this way. Like this. Like this. That'll work. That'll do. There we go. peek a -boo. <laughs> Okay. And the bunny. Now, I would usually use the bottle for this, but seeing as I still have so much glue left on my memo tape, I don't want to waste it. So, we're going to use it. Because who wants to waste things? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does anyone else do that hum while they're like, <laughs> while they're doing things? Oh gosh, I'm so like back on the. Oh, um, Spectrum Noir illustrators, I think she, she was talking about. Um... Yeah, they are a good budget version. I don't think you'll find them on cult pens, Wendy, but Spectrum Noir Illustrators. You will find them on Crafty Purple Frog Store, I think. I don't know how many Amy has got left, though. I hardly ever send the things I put on the side as I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cult pens. I thought she meant the, the range of markers that you were talking about maybe both <laughs> yeah spectrum noir illustrators i actually do still have some illustrator blends i've just remembered these are these are the illustrators um so you get the the brush end and then instead of a chisel end you get like a really thin nib end which is also probably really good for small images but but um when i got rid of my illustrators i kept the purples because <laughs> purples illustrators were my favorite favorite blend color um so i did keep keep those and then i gifted the rest to someone else that was building their collection who i have since managed to uh convert to copic markers to <laughs> sorry ali <laughs> I think once you get your first Copic marker, like you end up becoming hooked. Um, I thought I was okay until I was always like, no, I'm fine with my Spectrum Noirs. And then I went to visit Leslie for a crafty session before she moved to Scotland because she used to live sort of not too far from me. And I got a chance to use her Copic markers for the first time. And that was it. I was hooked. <laughs> I was just, that's it. From there started. I think I originally got a set, which is what I was saying is probably not the best way to do it. Because it was nearly my birthday and I didn't know what I wanted to ask for. And I asked for a set of Copic markers because they were on offer at Colt Pens. Um... Where's that bunch of flowers gone? Um, so I got those for like a birthday present and then I built the collection up. I actually bought some off of eBay in like a auction. And then from there I've just built it up slowly. Every time Colt Pens has a good, good deal. I think the best deal that I find that they do is three for two. Like three for two markers. They do sometimes do five for four. But the three for two is definitely the best offer in my view. 
But again, if you want a 10% off code, that also works. Works well if you're spending a, a little bit of money. Okay, so we've got a yellow birdie there. Oh. Yellow birdie here. And I'll need to back it onto a card base, but I'll do that after the live, I think. Because my tummy, I have been here for two hours, <laughs> my tummy is probably about to growl. Uh, pop that one there, that little pink birdie. Okay, I think I'm actually going to bring in some enamel dots, because those that know me know I love the enamel dots. And so does Leslie, and as this is for her, that's what we'll do. So we've got some pinks there, that's the wild flowers, and some yellows. I think that pink's probably a bit too much, that's very bright. We've got a baby pink, which kind of works with this, I guess. And we could use greens. I could put some greens down here in the grass. We could use the tinsel town for that, or... Or wildflowers again. Let's stick with the wildflowers. I didn't realise I'd already opened a pack there. Now I've got two open packs of wildflowers. <laughs> so these are the enamel dots. Uh, yes, crafter's companion for your illustrators. Okay, so let's go with actually a nice light green down here. So when I'm doing enamel dots, I do them in odd numbers, three, five, seven, nine, however many you want to go for there. I'm going to put in a, oh, stuck it to my finger instead of the card. I'm also going to put a pink one down here just to bring some pink into that corner. Let's put, oops, the yellow one here. I'm going to go for a double yellow there. And you may want to try and think about a triangle as well. So I'm actually just going to come up here and do one up here. So I've got a green, a pink and a yellow. I think I'll probably go for another green. I'm actually maybe going to do more because I've just broken my own rule. Put a pink one up here as well. Oh, very close together. So two, four, six. So I need one more. I think another green one maybe over here. Let's go just a really small one. I could literally cover my cards in enamel dots. I'm, I never feel like I'm actually just done with enamel dots. <laughs> okay, so there we have it, guys. We have, I will back it onto a card base and share it um, properly in the group after the live. But we had used quite a few sets there. So we've got... Uh, I'll just run you through it. We had the Get Well Soon Shadow Word Dye, and I used the shadow just to mask off before I ink blended for my word dye. Uh, we got the Grassy Border Last Dyes. We got the Tremendous Peekaboo. Peekaboo! <laughs> uh, we also used the Wood Grain Background Texture Dye to put the texture into the tree. Don't forget that that is 15% off at the moment over on the Heffy Doodle website. And then you've got the Nuts About You stamp set, which is the squirrel. We have the Wrapped With Love, which is the bunny. We have Who Let The Dogs Out Here. And then we use the Berry Big Hearts, which is the flowers in the dog's mouth and the chocolates. And then the birds are also taken from the Nuts About You stamp set. And the little bunch of flowers here was just from the Happily Ever Crafter stamp set um as well so we really mixed and matched there and then you've got your wildflower enamel dots so again thank you so much for joining me today i am back on friday 9 p.m uk time there is an event in the group so be sure to go and click that bell if you want to be notified and i will tag everybody again um either probably 24 hours before or on the day um and i will catch up with you all soon thanks everybody bye